because of the water that's coming into it. So you're always going to have insects, and the frogs love the insects, and then the other critters want to come and eat the frogs. It's so the food you get chain, some right? raccoons mm -hmm. and, and different animals that will get in here, and sometimes they'll burrow. And that's why I say, you know, it's maintenance, maintenance, maintenance on everything, no matter what you have, whether it be a, a lagoon or another type of septic system. It's just um, they all have their little issues that have to be addressed from time to time. But lagoons tend to be very low maintenance, um, typically just trimming everything out maybe once a year, um, just doing what you can about any vegetation that's starting to, to grow in there. It's really hard to manage, um, but but typically about once a year folks can, can trim and, and kind of keep everything under okay. control. Um, and then from time to time, just due to erosion, um, it may need to be shored up on the berms with some, some additional soil. Um, it looks pretty good here. I mean, it's not uniformly flat and four feet wide in every, you know, all the way around. That's um, more than you can really ask for in these situations, I think. Um, but it looks pretty good. It's definitely holding. Um, it's definitely got some surface water diversion on the front end. A little bit of animal activity, but not nothing that's causing any breaches or anything that I would worry is going to cause the water to start running out. So what is the size regulation for lagoons? Is it per square footage of the home or bedroom? It's per bedroom. It goes off occupancy just like um, regular, any other septic okay. type of septic system. Um, and the, the guideline is 400 square feet of surface area per bedroom. And if you have a septic tank in front of it, you get a 20% size reduction. Um, so we're going to measure here, and again, you know, the, the home has been vacant. It's getting a lot of good evaporation. Um, it does look like it's it's lower than it normally would be. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of a variable because we're not going to know exactly how much square footage of surface area there is until it's at a normal operating level. And that's kind of one of the challenges that we talked about on the way up here with vacant homes and, and how that differs from houses where people are showering, doing laundry, um, using the water regularly every day. Yeah. Um, and, the, and, and a low water level in a lagoon is certainly um, is certainly normal for a vacant home. Uh, it's it's uh, not unusual at all. And um, there are times I think when adding the required amount of water still doesn't bring it to the, that operating level because it has been vacant for so long and, and it's just been evaporating for so long. So um, we, will, we will measure it. Um, we will use the bottom of the pipe there kind of as our guideline mm -hmm. as to where the normal um, operating level will be and, and that will help me hopefully determine whether or not it's a, has an adequate surface area. Just eyeballing, I'm gonna say, yeah, it's, okay. it's big enough. So this property, its sewage system is solely this lagoon. There's not a septic tank in That's right. before it. That's right. So it's doing a lot of work. I mean, the, nature is doing a lot of work. Nature for, is mm -hmm. doing all the work, yes. And um, nature and gravity is bringing the water to it. And then the sunshine and, and wind is providing the um, sanitation and the treatment. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is building a new construction and they're considering lagoon, septic, or, or both, is there an advantage to having? Lagoons are le a lot less expensive to put in. Okay. Um, they are low maintenance in terms of some of the other types of systems that are available. Um, I like lagoons because there's not a lot of working parts and there's not a lot of things that can go wrong. That's true. Um, and as long as they are getting sunshine on them and, and wind, you won't smell them. And, and they do provide good treatment. Yeah, I haven't noticed any odor. No. So, so if you, uh, houses that have a septic in front of the lagoon, what are some of the advantages of having that? It gives them a size reduction on the size of the lagoon, the lagoon they have to have. Um, and it traps those solids in the tank. And so um, it's just the affluent water that comes right. out to the lagoon. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. I'm having um, Amity, my lovely assistant, turn on the, the water in the house, and we just want to make sure that it flows from the house into the lagoon. Um, the standard is for the pipe being to enter under the water level. Um, I don't see that very often. It's typically more above the water level and allows everything to kind of drop down into the lagoon. Um, on the ones where they do enter below the water level, I think sometimes they 
it can be more troublesome. Um, and I think that the reasoning for it is to make sure that that water is not the water that's on the surface evaporating. They want to hold it. It needs to be held in there for a time to get good treatment. Um, to me, that's not a big issue. Of course, I'll mark, no, it doesn't come in under the water level. Um, and it'll be up to the to the buyer okay. or the buyer's bank to say we're okay with that or we're not. It's, I, I don't... I don't see it as a big health or safety risk. Okay, got so, it. And those are my things, health and safety. Um, it, it, I'm really going to call attention to something I feel might be a danger to someone or could make someone sick. Other than that, I try to um, kind of distinguish between what's a part of functionality, what is simply the standard that the state has set forth, and kind of where the middle ground is, if there is any. Um, because again, I don't have authority to make people do anything. Um, the paperwork doesn't even go to the state typically until 30, 30 days after the inspection. So it's unlikely that they're gonna interfere. Um, it, the process is really just about letting that buyer know what's there um, and know what they're getting. So Kelly, are the clean outs required for every lagoon? Um, they are for lagoons, for homes, between the home and the septic tank, it's recommended. Okay. Um, so it's not. So that's the clean out. This is the clean out. Oh, okay. And there's no water in the bottom of the pipe. And that's good, that's what we wanna see. Okay. If, if we were to see um, a couple of inches of water here, we would know that it's not flowing out completely at the lagoon. Okay. Um, because the pipe would be full of water and backing up here. Okay, got it. So let's go.